Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On this episode of General Hospital, Sam confides in Carly about Drew's changes, Joss takes on Adam's father, and Esm looks to Ava for assistance. Laura shows up to see Cyrus at the hospital. Cyrus says that after confronting Sonny at the chapel, he had a realization and has since let go of his resentment, wishing only for peace. Laura queries whether this is the reason he called her here at the crack of dawn. He claims to have called her because he needs her assistance with a lost soul. Cyrus remarks that Spencer is just on schedule as he enters. Laura queries what's happening. Cyrus reports that he received a lonely and desperate visitor last night. Laura is inquiring as to what is going on, and Spencer is aware that it was Esma. Spencer acknowledges seeing his dad the other night. When Laura finds out that Nicholas was in the city and missed her, she is shocked and wonders why he took the chance of returning to Port Charles. Spencer claims that he allowed Nicholas to steal Ace. While Laura is horrified, Spencer argues that Ace wasn't secure with Esme. Laura says Esme has shown that she is a capable mother. Why did Esme visit Cyrus, she wonders. Cyrus claims she thought he still had a lot of influential people. Laura is in shock over Spencer's actions and how he managed to abduct a child from the only family he knew. Spencer maintains that Esme has been lying to them and that she is fully recallable. He clarifies that prior to her memory loss, she used to call him Spence. He acknowledges that he threatened to pursue the previous charges against Esme if she went to the police. Laura can't believe he handed Ace over to Nicholas without any solid evidence, just a gut feeling. Cyrus cuts her off and asks, if Esme came to you for help, who else would she turn to? He also asks, what will she do if she finds Nicholas? Spencer doesn't think they should call the police, but Laura does. Laura claims Ace feels safer with them and questions why he didn't tell her about his concerns. Ace ought to be with them when the situation involving the youngster and his parents is resolved. They have the option of reporting Esme to the police. Ace is safer, in Spencer's opinion, with his father. Laura claims that Spencer and Nicholas have both displayed poor judgment and that the baby is in more risk now that Nicholas is on the run. As they leave Cyrus's room, Spencer thinks that Isma's decision to see Cyrus proves she is still a threat. Laura reports Ace's kidnapping to Dant over the phone. Willow tells Adam when he wakes up that he is at GH and that his friend saved his life. Does he recall anything from last night, she asks. She claims he took drugs, and he claims to have consumed a lot of alcohol. Adam claims they were meant to treat a cold, and he's ready to return to his dorm. Willow informs him that he's fortunate to be alive, and that he must first be cleared. Adam says, I'm lucky. Joss is found by Dex in the hospital chapel. After learning what had transpired from the RA Kylie, he wished she had phoned him so he could support her. She feels that she need to go see Adam and give him an apology. According to Dex, his parents are the only ones who ought to apologize to him. Joss knows Adam needs assistance. And a good friend, which is what you've been, Dex continues. Portia returns to Adam's room to see how he's doing. When Adam asks when he can leave, Willow gives her own excuse. Adam claims that Joss, his friend, overreacted last night due to a misunderstanding. I'd like to sign him out. Because Portia and her team are familiar with Joss, neither of them overreacts. She explains that before he is allowed to go, he must have a psychiatrist review him per hospital protocol. Adam tries to use the fact that Portia is Trina's mother as leverage to get out, but she is adamant that they follow protocol. She claims he needs to be diagnosed and that if it turns out he poses a risk to himself or others, they won't be able to release him. He freaks out when she brings up his parents. He asks what Portia told his parents when she says she had to call them. His parents will interrogate him, but Portia says he's over 18, and they can't tell anyone what occurred without his consent. She requests that he be truthful with his parents, the physician who will examine him and himself. After leaving, 
Portia asks Willow about the psychiatric nurse. He will soon be down, she says. When Steve Mize's character, Adam's father, shows up and insists to see his son, they talk about the pressure Adam is under. When Dex and Joss get there, they hear Adam's father calling his son a fool for wasting their money and making a fool of himself. Porchy promises to go see whether the attendant who needs to see Adam is okay. Joss hurries over to tell Portia that Adam is unable to leave. What does she know about his son and all of this? asks Adam's father. Joss claims that because Adam is under pressure, he has been keeping everything from him. Adam's father claims he's tossing away the fact that his son got accepted to a prestigious medical school and has excellent marks. Joss claims that instead of going out, he is self-medicating when he has panic episodes. Joss doesn't need to worry about this, says Adam's father. She says that Adam attempted suicide last night, and that should worry him. Joss says Adam would prefer not to confront him since he is so terrified of him. Adam's father accuses Joss of lying, demands her removal, and threatens legal action if she approaches him within 50 feet. Declaring Joss's departure, Portia brings Adam's father to her office for a conversation. Joss is persuaded to leave by Willow and Dex, and perhaps Dr. Robinson can speak with his father. Joss consents to go, but not before checking in on Adam. When Esme shows up at Ava's gallery, she begs her to stay since she needs her assistance. Ava asks her to spit out what she wants. Has she seen Nicholas? As in queries. Why does Ava ask, she wonders. Because he kidnapped my son, sobs Esme. Esme adds that Nicholas visited Laura's apartment while she was in court, and Spencer gave ace to Nicholas. Although Spencer was said to despise his father, she believed that she and Spencer were getting along. According to Ava, both father and son are self-serving. Ava asks Ism what she thinks she can do for her, understanding what it's like to be far from your child. Nicholas might have come to see her, Ism assumes. Ava acknowledges his presence, but he's left and she won't be able to locate him. Ava adamantly denies helping Nicholas take her son when Ism asks whether she did. She claims that Nicholas possesses resources, is a Cassidine, and she won't track him down. Essen points out that she has resources and a formidable ally of her own. Who? Chuffles Ava. And Cyrus is identified by Esme. Esme asserts that Cyrus remains Ace's family, but Ava maintains that she must be kidding. Ava acknowledges that Cyrus made no promises to her when she inquires about them. She sobs and adds, I'm alone in this, before running out. When Sam visits Bobby's, Carly is conducting interviews to fill the position of assistant manager. Sam declines Carly's offer to get her anything, saying she needs to wait on Drew. Carly predicts a protracted wait for Drew. Sam acknowledges that she and Drew haven't been getting along lately and that she set up this meeting to try to work through these problems. Since returning from Pentonville, Sam feels as though tensions have been high. Sam queries Carly about any changes Drew has made since his return. After his ordeal in Pentonville, Carly claims that Drew is having trouble adjusting. As he was beginning to regain his composure, they learned that Nina had called the SEC on them and that her mother had passed away. Sam observes that Drew doesn't seem to be furious at Nina alone. Carly claims she's making an effort to move on and preserve her mother's legacy. She adds that since her mother gave people second chances, they should do the same for Drew. Sam promises to listen to Drew's ideas and see if there is any way she can help. They revisit Drew's decision to go to prison in order to keep Carly safe, and Carly declares that she is committed to supporting him during this ordeal. When Nina gets to Crimson, she discovers movers packing out her office. One mover claims they are doing their job, but she declares she's contacting security. Who ordered this, she queries. Telling Nana that he did, Drew enters the room. He can't even get her out of her own workplace, she scoffs. He claims that since he owns Aurora and Aurora owns Crimson, this is business and thus Aurora is fired. Nana claims he made a mistake and she won't take it lying down. She claims that Michael is still in charge of Aurora, 
and that he is a businessman who understands that without her, the magazine will fail. She elevated Aurora's main publication, Crimson, to the nation's leading fashion magazine. She queries what sort of father, whose daughter has a significant portion of the company, would ruin it. Drew is furious and tells Nina not to include his daughter in this. Drew queries whether he ever did anything to her to make what she did to him justified. She claims that Carly was the main focus of this and that she didn't want him to go to jail. He claims that she was genuinely motivated by insecurity to exact revenge on Carly. He claims that she detests the fact that Carly is closer to Wiley, Amelia, Willow, and even Sonny. He should accept some responsibility, according to Nana, as he intervened to save Carly when it wasn't necessary. Since he can't fire her since the magazine wouldn't exist without her, Nina advises Drew to speak with legal. Drew claims that he is aware of this and doesn't care. He would stop at nothing to force her to pay. She claims that in retaliation, he is prepared to close the magazine and fire the employees. Drew says it's her fault and that until she signs a formal paperwork confirming her termination, Crimson and all of its employees will cease to exist. As Drew leaves, Nana notices a picture of her, Willow, and the children in a box. When Drew comes back, he asks her what she decided. Even though it means giving up what she has worked so hard to build, she signs the document in an attempt to salvage the magazine and the staff. Drew gloats that Crimson won't miss her, that he's not a moron, and that Crimson was never in danger. She asks him if he thinks he can keep the editors, photographers, and designers as the magazine wouldn't exist without her. She cries that he cannot replicate her, but Drew replies that he has already done so. As Carly enters, she gives Nina a smile. Esme turns to Heather in the upcoming General Hospital episode. Laura converses with Dante. Gregory is asked for a favor by Brooklyn and Chase. Scott and Tracy engage in combat. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.